Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today is a bit of a curveball. It's one of those days again to say farewell to a Shmi Mobile, a car that some of you might have expected would leave the collection before long, but others might be a bit surprised. And I'd like to talk today on the very last drive in this particular car about why exactly this is. Now, of course, we've discussed this topic at length recently. We've just said farewell to the Aston Martin DBS. Not all that long ago, my AMG GTR Roadster departed from the garage, and there might well be one or two more because over the last year and a bit since moving here to this museum, we've grown the team, we've brought on the extra space and the expenses that incurs and grown the collection by quite a few new cars as well in the meantime. But sadly today, we're going to be waving farewell and saying a last goodbye to my Lamborghini Huracan STO. I'm gonna be taking it over to Lamborghini Pangborn exactly a year to the day after I bought the car and picked it up. It is the exact same date a year on since I purchased the bright, crazy, track-focused Lamborghini Huracan in Viola Bast. What a whirlwind of a year it's been. But today, while we take that car, for the last time driving it, I will explain all why it's departing, how I can let that go. It's gonna be a difficult one, but let's get on the road. Let's get over to Lamborghini Pangborn and explain all. I spoke recently about how we were going to be in store for some surprises, departures from the collection that you might not be expecting. I feel incredibly fortunate to own and experience cars like these, to drive them, to go on road trips, to take them to track days, and to share all of this with you guys through the videos. But I have to be realistic. I'm not a billionaire. I cannot afford to keep each and every single car. And Damon discussed this recently prior to selling his Porsche Carrera GT. The Stradman has sold a few cars recently as well. It's not sustainable to keep everything. We've been seeing the rapid growth of the Schmimobiles over the last year or so. Quite a few big ticket cars have arrived. Not so many big ticket cars, in fact, zero have departed. And of course, that means I need to be a little bit pragmatic. So I moved here to the Schmuseum about a year and three or four months ago. Since then, of course, we've had the arrival of plenty of cars. Around 15 or 16 new cars have joined the collection. We've more recently had the expansion of the garage. I'm working on the build of the workshop with some ideas and things I'd love to do with that, inspired as well, by the way, by Matt Armstrong and the amazing stuff he's getting up to. Also the office space, the build for there, and some other projects, the growth of the team and things happening in the background. So while over that same time period, we've seen the arrival of the Zenvo, the STO, the SF90, the GT Black Series. We've not seen any cars of that category departing. And of course it doesn't really add up. I'm not going to lie, three or four million pounds worth of cars coming in and only a couple of hundred thousand pounds worth of cars going out. Now we have recently said farewell to my AMG GTR Roadster, to the Aston Martin DBS, and we might see one or two more of the lower budget cars departing, but I pretty much concluded that one of the big ticket cars needed to go. And I spent a long time deliberating which one that was going to be before landing on the Hurricane STO. It's not exactly an easy choice because of course, this is between the Zenvo TSRS, which up to this point has not yet been here to the Schmuseum. That's not gonna be leaving anytime soon. The McLaren Senna, we discussed a little bit about whether that could be an option. My Ford GT, with all of the memories I've had with that. The fairly recently acquired Ferrari SF90 Stradale that I pretty much drive every day. The Mercedes SLS AMG Black Series, very much an iconic Schmimobile. The GT Black Series, which is over in the USA, ahead of the tour there with all of the adventures, including the Middle East and places that's been, or the Hurricane STO. And as you can see, that's not a particularly easy group of seven cars to choose between. In fact, take any of them. And I've had some amazing moments, some amazing memories, some amazing things that really mean that car feels, or I feel so attached to that car and don't want to see it depart. But there are reasons I've chosen the STO and I'll get to that in just a moment. This is a car that is the ultimate 
fairly limited version of the Huracan, the baby V10 Lambo supercar. And of course, with this, we've been to the Nürburgring, where I may or may not have been asked to leave the Nürburgring because it was a little bit on the loud side. We've been down to the factory, to Santa Bolognese, the home of Lamborghini, to see the Huracan assembly line. We've been all around Europe. It's been to quite a few different events. We had the whole process behind the specification and choosing this glorious viola bast paintwork. Then the slightly controversial yellow accents. I know choosing those was definitely a topic that certainly got a few people a little bit rustled, we could say but the result is something that is everything a Lamborghini should be. So why, oh why, am I now considering, or actually today, taking this car for sale? How can I let it go? And the long story short is, it's almost impossible to choose between these cars, but out of them all, I think the STO is the car that grabs my heartstrings the least, we could say. Don't get me wrong, it's a glorious engine. It's absolutely bonkers. But I think perhaps I could say that it's almost a little bit too brash and out there for me. I'm a person who likes the more, apart from the bright colours, I know, but bright colours that are slightly less bright than that, slightly more subdued in a way, all about the dynamic side of things. And I've never, as I've said through the videos, completely gelled with the dynamic steering and the ride in here. I dislike the fact you don't have the ego mode to set it up how you would exactly like it. So if you want the louder exhaust and the more throttle response, you also have to have the very heavy steering and the ridiculously rough ride. You can't have a combination of them both. It's a car that gets so much attention everywhere it goes. Honestly, this sounds bonkers to say, that gets way more attention than any of those things. The Senna, the GT, the SF90, particularly the SF90. Obviously, I have quite a smart specification on the SF90, which means it doesn't jump out. And sometimes that's a little bit too much. It's almost like having experienced it has given me what I wanted out of the car, if that makes sense. It's given me that Lamborghini ownership experience, and it won't be my last Lamborghini. Do not get me wrong. There will certainly be another Lambo at some point before too long, watch this space. But for the time being, I won't lie, values are high, I've driven the car, I've done over 4,000 miles with the car, it's not like I kept it on delivery mileage just to flip it or anything like that. I didn't really know at the time what my long-term plans would be. In fact, at one period, I thought with the arrival of the SF90 and then of the Zenvo, that this might have had to depart a little bit earlier. So I've been glad to hold on to it longer than I perhaps originally intended and expected. But the car is immaculate. The car is completely perfect. I've grabbed everything that goes with it. All of the goodies we saw upon collection. Obviously, it comes with the two keys and we've got the uh, specific Lamborghini CTEC charger all boxed away. It comes with the fitted STO car cover as well. So all of this stuff that you squeeze back into the Cofango at the front of the car and tuck away with it. It sounds amazing and I'm going to miss it. You know, I'm going to miss the quirks of the fact that to open up the front, you have to come round and press these buttons on each side just to then pivot this whole thing forwards. It makes no sense. And perhaps one of the things about this car for me is that so much of it makes no sense. Having one gigantic carbon fiber piece, absolutely no luggage space, as you can see with the toolkit and first aid stuff in there. And things like having a snorkel, which is debatable because it doesn't go to the intake plenum. It just kind of fills some air in through the back somewhere. It's crazy. It's a Lamborghini. But then, like I say, I go to each of the other cars and I just have no idea how to choose between them. How to choose which of these was going to head out. And I suppose that's the only thing that caught the STO. And that's why we are here right now. I do have some more thoughts on this. So we'll get it started. Ludicrously loud V10 cold start inbound. And then we'll head out on the road and make our way over to Lamborghini Pangborn where I picked it up exactly a year ago to go and drop it off. I'm not gonna lie, you have to be completely in the zone and bring your A game when you are driving this car because the madness that happens with other drivers around you, the swerves that people make across lanes to get close to it, the people who are holding their phones to take photos while they're driving, and the absolute bonkers stuff that happens in this car is unlike any other. It just stands out like the most mad thing you've ever seen on the road. I'm sure the colors are a big part of that, but just being 
a crazy Lamborghini. It's pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. It's a pretty intense experience. But as we're driving along and basically we've got a whole load of traffic around the M25, even though the sun is out, it's a lovely afternoon. We're in seventh gear in STO mode, chilling. You hear a little bit of the V10. Normally, the valves would be in and it would be near on silent. But at Lamborghini Pangborn, when I popped by, we opened the exhaust valves and the sound became amazing. You get the full, loud, raucous startup noise. Normally on the cold start, it would actually close the valves. So you now get that opened above about 5,000 RPM. It makes no difference. The valve would always be open. But just going along, you've got that sound in the background. And then, of course, if you go into Trofeo mode and you go into manual and you start to drop some gears, you get all the V10 that you could possibly want to hear. And it's in Trofeo mode, if we go down a few more, actually, you start getting all the crackles from behind. How did they homologate this? How is this a legal standard exhaust system on this car? I have absolutely no idea how in 2021 that was a possible thing. Even if you go back into STO, of course, with the valves open, it's still pretty loud, just without the crackles. And I make no secret, that is what I'm going to miss about this car. That sound is just phenomenal. It is so, so cool. And I, I don't know, it's a massive, massive selling point. The V10s goes back to when I had my R8 V10. That was, of course, a derivative of this engine. Things have evolved a little bit since then, but that was an earlier stage of this 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. So the sound system behind us is amazing. The sound system in here is really not so amazing. There's so much carbon fiber in here with the door cards that the speaker system it's not best, let's just say. But anyway, you're supposed to be listening to that sound. And you know, every single car, it's like thumbs up and just, you can't hide in this thing. You cannot even begin to hide driving it. And it makes it an intense experience. It makes it an intense car to drive. Of course, you've spotted the Heritage Focus RS that we're driving with today as part of the drop-off, enjoying that as the practical car of the week, heading around and about. And you know, perhaps something like that might be sensible to sell. They're worth strong money and I don't drive it all that much. But I've had it for a while. I had that whole story of the Blue RS, the Red RS, the Ford GT, now the GT500. It's more of a personal thing. And buying and selling cars doesn't need logic. It doesn't need rhyme and reason. It's just how your heart feels sometimes and what feels right at that particular time and plans for the future. We've got an M3 or an M4. M4 coming past right now with those distinctly noticeable front grills as I saw it arriving. Sometimes it's just, yeah, that one feels right at the time. And this is why perhaps people often, well, people often ask me every time, all the time, what's the car that I regret selling the most? And I don't generally regret selling a car because there was a reason at the time. There was a reason that car needed to go, whether it was to purchase the next car or whether it was to trade it in for a car from a brand or something, whatever it might have been. Maybe in five years time, the car that people ask, what do you regret selling? Maybe it will have been this, but kind of the same thing. Something needs to go and perhaps I would regret one of the others more. I think I probably would regret one of the others more, which is why we're heading to Lamborghini Pangborn with the STO today. It's a bit of a gutting feeling, really. It's a car that I would love to hold on to for a little bit longer. You know, next year is a really exciting year for Lamborghini, 60th anniversary, having been founded back in 1963. So 2023 will be a big year with many events, and it would be lovely to be able to take this and join in those events with this car. Alas, that's not possible, but regardless, it will be hopefully an option to cover some of those events on the channel, so do stay tuned for that. Just, as I said, needs must, and I've got other things I'd like to focus on, other priorities at the moment, and I'm not a person who's in a position to buy three or four million pounds worth of cars in a year without saying farewell for something along the way. It's so funny. You just don't hide in this thing. You probably see it more over my shoulder than I do. What a sound. Yeah, bit of a catch-22 this. I don't want to say goodbye to the STO, but I think a lot of you detected through the videos over the years that I never completely gelled with this car. From the very first time I drove one, which was actually a factory car that came to visit the museum, I drove it on roads local to me, particularly bumpy, rough roads, roads that I know from my test drive loop heading out of London going round rather than roads further afield, you know, when I travel to another country to test drive a car. And I was immediately kind of like, 
I'm not so sure about this. Particularly the steering. The steering just never feels right to me and the ride quality and a few things about it. And on the other hand, with the SF90, for example, when I drove one, I was just like, this is me in a car. And it's that difficult decision. And Damon talked a bit about this, especially when it comes to the channel and creating videos for you guys of head versus heart. The head says, everybody loves a Lamborghini, gotta drive a Lamborghini, gotta have the craziest possible. That's part of the reason for choosing the color scheme. But the heart just hasn't entirely been there for this one. That's not to say it won't be in the future, just it, it hasn't, you know, I, I wanted to fall more for it than I think I have done overall. And that's just something that, like I say, you can't write an equation for, you can't work out in advance, you can't know what it's gonna be. You just go with the flow, enjoy it. And I tell you what, I have enjoyed this immensely. From going through all of the specification with the amazing guys at Lamborghini Broward while I was out in Florida the early part of last year buying the GT500, to of course Craig and the team at Lamborghini Pangborn who are legends. Craig, Max and everyone there has just been so, so good throughout the ownership of the car, which is why we're going directly back there with it and why I will certainly, if I ever buy another Lamborghini, you heard it here, I will order it from those guys. They are the best in the business. Truly, truly brilliant. And I don't know, just the whole story really. So let's get a little bit further on, find some nice roads where we can open this up and touch more. And we'll make our way to Lamborghini Pangborn. Well, out of absolutely nowhere, it has started just pouring down for a second. That was literally just a second of heavy rain. And now we're back to basically being clear again. Well, that was kind of odd. Anyway, the bizarre activities of a motorway journey in a pink Lamborghini have continued. It is a little bit crazy what goes down when you're driving in this thing. We're not too far now, only about the last 20 minutes or so, the last 18 miles of driving in my STO. That seems, I don't know, mixed emotions about saying that. Off the motorway though, and this is what's particularly fun with this car. <laughs> now these are actually the roads near to Lamborghini Pangborn where I first drove and actually first rode in a Lamborghini Huracan full stop. So to now obviously be driving the same roads kind of feels like a bookend. It's blisteringly quick. The shifts are lightning fast. It's not as fast, obviously, as the Senna or the SF90, that level of car, or even the GT Black series, but it's plenty quick, we can say. The emotion that it carries, though, is just ludicrous. Those mid-range revs on the downshift, monstrous. I'm gonna put it up into Trofeo, actually, for the last set of downshifts here, because aggression. It's only five and a half thousand RPM. That's not even anywhere near the red line. Compared to how muted something with a twin turbocharged V8 is, for example, this just sounds silly. It's absolutely silly. But silly is so good. And that's what I'll miss the most the silliness of this car. I'm now in the village of Pangborn. This is the end of the drive. This is the end of a journey. This is the end of an adventure. This is the end of my time with this car, my first Lamborghini, the end of my time with this magnificent Viola Bast Hurricane STO. What a Lamborghini it's been. What an experience it's actually been. I think there's gonna be a lot of time to reflect on this one more and in comparison with, say, the Aston DBS that I recently dropped off, and even the AMG GTR Roadster, I'm much more torn to say goodbye to this car. Much more. Much more than I have been for a car that I've sold for quite a while, because this isn't selling it to go and buy something else. This is selling it for more responsible reasons, we could say, at the end of the day. That is probably the right approach to take, especially with the whole world around us at the moment and the uncertainty and the craziness of everything that's going on and just, I guess, normalizing after what has been a wild, wild, wild 15 months for the Schmimobiles. Too wild, too wild, we can say. But hey, this is 
one of the last things for right now before heading to the US for the tour with the GT Black Series. And like I say, there will be another one. Do not fear. There'll be another something like this at some point in the future. The last little quarter mile in the traffic, we do have the lift system. Pop that up as we arrive at Aston Martin and Lamborghini Pangborn. I spot a couple of Burris outside, an SVJ I think just there as well. And it was right inside here. Oh, there's an SE30 Performante. It was right inside here that this car was sat waiting for me exactly 12 months ago. Exactly 12 months ago, right inside there. I almost went for that color. But there we have it. There we have it. Farewell, STO. I've enjoyed this. It was a day exactly like this a year ago when I collected the STO, the sun out on an October afternoon and the color of this thing. I remember when we pulled it out into the sunshine for the first time, the first time I had ever seen a car painted in viola bast and I saw how much metallic sparkle came off this. It was just a massive wow moment. It was a, am I really doing this moment? Have I really bought this car? And of course, at the time it didn't have the yellow. It's all satin black underneath due to the availability of the contrast pack. It wasn't an option for every single customer, which made the spec process a little bit confusing, but just some flashes of yellow, the brake calipers and the interior details as well, because inside here, it's a really nice place to be. I went for the sports seats with the yellow piping and the yellow stitch, all the dark chrome, the toggles and the dials and the optional carbon, obviously Alcantara everywhere you look, even on the steering wheel and all of the other parts. It's a really, really cool thing. I'm not gonna lie, it's a really, really cool car. And I'm looking at this now and looking at the sparkles and reflections off it and thinking, how can I do this? How can I say farewell to this car? How is it possible? You never know, maybe nobody buys it and then maybe I just call it back because I have regretted exactly what I've done. Who knows what happens down the line. But I stand here at Lamborghini Pangborn with that lovely SE30 Performante inside. And I should probably point out the other cars here. We've got an SV Roadster and an SVJ Roadster just casually chilling out in the car park area. Is that maybe even Verde Scandal? I think it could be something like that. That super light, slightly greeny yellow. This is what Lambos are supposed to be, right? Brash, bold, statement pieces out there. It's what they always were if you think back. Mura, Kuntash, Diablo, Murcielago, Gallardo, Aventador, Huracan. Urus, of course, by SUV standards is pretty out there as well. So, thus concludes my voyage with the Huracan STO. I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone involved in all of the video content I've been able to produce along the way with this, the team at the factory, the team here at Lamborghini Pangborn, all of you guys for being part of it and joining in the journey. As I think I've made pretty clear, not so happy about saying goodbye to this one. And my apologies for the wind. It's really quite windy this afternoon, but needs must. Onwards and upwards, we go on from here to very exciting things. That is it for this time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot, as always, and I'm sure we'll see more with this car at some point down the line. That's it for today, though. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.